laterality and brain dysfunction. Uh, well, uh, the today, uh, the last time, last week, the, we talked about some basic principles of laterality to introduce some new concepts and all that. Today, it's a much more kind of a matter of fact talk, the presentation. We'll be talking about various specific disorders and how they may be expressed in a lateralized fashion. And uh, so let's start with cerebrovascular disorders. And of course, when people talk about CVAs, uh, the cerebrovascular disorder, there are several of them. Uh, there, there are uh, cerebrovascular accidents, there are transient ischemic attacks, there, there, there's multi-infarct disease, there are aneurysms, there are arterious venous malformations, and of those, many can be expressed in a lateralized fashion. In fact, CVAs are likely to be expressed in a lateralized fashion. Why? Because they are particularly likely to, uh, to occur within the distribution of the middle cerebral artery, uh, which by definition means that they affect one or the other hemisphere. Same is true for uh, transient ischemic attacks, uh, the, that they are very likely to be lateralized. Uh, the, uh, the, the same is true for aneurysms or for arterial venous malformation. So, uh, the, uh, the, the, but of course, when people talk about cerebrovascular disorders, people are particularly interested in cerebrovascular accidents. And just by way of the very general preamble, there are two kinds of them, ischemic and hemorrhagic. Uh, I'm sure that many of you, maybe even most of you know that. Uh, the ischemic uh, the CVAs are more common. They account for about 85% of all CVAs, whereas hemorrhagic are less common. They account for about 15% of all CVAs, uh, and uh, the ischemic CVAs in turn are divided into so-called thrombotic, embolic, uh, or embolic uh, the, uh, uh, the CVAs, uh, uh, depending on whether it's a local occlusion that produces this local ischemia, or whether it's an embolus carried by the bloodstream. And then there is such a thing as systemic hypoperfusion, which is also a form of ischemic uh, event, but affecting the whole brain, or large portions of the brain. Now, hemorrhagic CVAs, which account for 15%, all of the in turn are divided into so-called intraaxial the, 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 and extraaxial hemorrhagic CVAs and intraaxial CVAs may be may occur inside the brain tissue that they are called intraparenchymal or they may occur or may occur inside the ventricle and that they are called interventricular or they, it can be both uh, the, and extraaxial the CVAs which occur outside the brain uh, can be epidural, subdural, or subarachnoid. Uh, so uh, so uh, CVA uh, the, uh, are usually associated with some degree of cognitive impairment. And the nature of the cognitive impairment is a function of the anatomy of the CVA. And why uh, did I choose to start our discussion with various lateralized forms of brain dysfunction is because CVA is the most common cause of lateralized brain damage. But the reason, as I said, being that uh, the, the distribution of the middle cerebral artery is the most kind of a common arena territory for CVAs to occur. And by definition, middle cerebral artery provides blood supply for the cortical convexity on one side or on the other. There are two of them. Okay. Now, so what are these cognitive difficulties? In the right-handed individual, following a left cerebrovascular accident, there may be a variety of events. There may be aphasia and dyslexia. Of course, aphasia is a deficit of spoken language. Alexia is a deficit of written language. There may be apraxias. There may be certain agnosias, which we talked about last time, uh, last week, so-called associative agnosias. There may be echolculias. Let's talk about each of them, each of them separately. Well, what are the forms of aphasias which we encounter uh, the following left CVA. Uh, and again, following left anything, uh, the, any focal uh, lesion of any etiology may result in aphasia, but realistically, CVA is by far the single most common uh, cause uh, the, thereof. So, well, of course, when people talk about various types of aphasias, why one immediately thinks about these classical uh, the, uh, descriptions by Broca and Wernicke. We talked about them a little bit last time, Broca's aphasias and Wernicke aphasia. Uh, and these notions are, you know, current, or at least used even today. And this notion uh, that Broca's aphasia uh, the, uh, the, uh, is associated with deficit of expressive language, but the receptive language is spared, and the Wernicke's aphasia uh, the, uh, the receptive language is